Hi, my name is Blue Custer, and I'm going to show you how to make a pre-trapping um, bait set. This is just a set without the actual trap. Um, it's still early in the, or still late in the summer, um, right before the season getting ready to start. Uh, I like to use this to see where I'm going to trap this coming season. It helps me determine the size of the coons, um, what they're more interested in in that particular area. Um, it's really paid off and helped me make my trapping um, checks a uh, success. Um, what I like to do is I like to um, trap my coons on a creek. So my first thing I do is I look for a creek and um, then I'll walk the creek. I find coon signs to see where they're using that. So I just picked this spot because I found a, this, it's just an old sandbar here. It's got a few um, coon tracks on it. Next, next thing you need to do is you need to um, clean out a spot. Now before I do that I'm going to tell you the supplies you need for this um, thing. You always need to use your trap gloves anytime you're ha even handling your trap. Scent is the biggest assist. You got um, your scent area, you're not going to catch anything for a few days until your scent's gone. The thing you need to do is a sledgehammer or a, just a regular hammer, a straight stick or stake, just any um, trapping lure. I'm using my own that I make. Sometimes you need garden tools, just a little rake and a little shovel. Um, some crawdads or some minnows. In this particular set, I'm going to use some crawdads. Alright. So now you need to clear you out a spot. Got a spot. Um, coons are not only attracted to uh, scent and stuff, they're also attracted to things that are eye appealing. So I like to make sh make it look like something's really been here. I mean, make it kind of big, make it look like something's been here messing around. Next thing I like to do is just a me thing. I like to um, put a imaginary trap there. I like to do it to see if I'd actually caught the coon. So I'm just going to make me an old trap bed. This little extra info I like to use um, a one and a half uh, Victor. Um, just that's my favorite trap. Perfect size for coon trapping. They're not expensive. We've been trapping. My set, my trap will be right there. It'll be right there. And this is how I determine where, how far I put my scent. Take my thumb and my pinky finger and spread them as far as far as I far as I can. And I put my thumb where my pan on my trap would be, and my pinky as far as I can stretch it. So my pan will be right there. Now my bait's gonna go right there. So you need to take your stake or your stick. You want to put your stick in at an angle, but you don't want to make it too steep that the coon has to walk all the way up and look straight in. Or you don't want to make it too straight in so that the coon can see it from a little bit of the distance. You want to make it kind of at a steeper angle. Or maybe just say uh, 45. Wiggle it around a little bit. Beat it in a little bit farther. I like to make it about uh, anywhere from four to five inches. You don't want it too deep because it takes longer for the sun to heat up your bait. And another um, thing, I like to do it when it's still summer so your fish are rot faster and it will get them in here quicker just by that scent. This, like I said, this spot I'm going to use crawl dead. Crawl dead in there. Then you want to plug your hole with two or three leaves. But you don't want to pack it too tight because then, once again, it takes a while for the scent to get out. But you want to also make it to where the um, tune has to play with to get it out. Alright. 
So another thing I like to do, this is not that everybody do, does this, and not everybody of you knows this, but no matter if there's no wind at all, and if there's just a calm day, this scent is still moving in and out of this crank bottom. That scent will still stay, I mean, head level in this creek bottom. But what I like to do is to, to get my scent as high as possible, to spread out all of these on banks around me, hills around me, and downstream. So how I do that is, this is where my, my trapping lure comes in. You find your tree branch a hair higher than your trap. They don't have to be too high, but just make sure it's any bit higher than your trap. And put you a few drops. So now that if it's a calm day, that scent will be higher. And next thing I like to do is like to put me two or three squirts in the branch so it'll be taken down the stream. Put my lid back on that. And well, I guess I could put me a drop or two on my thing. It's just extra. Well, you know, anything extra help. And the last thing I like to do is take a little bit of my juice that my minnows or crawdads have been sitting in and pull around the area that I cleared out. Sometimes I'll even use a spray bottle. I know that water's not going to have too much scent because I just got it from a creek. But anything that gives you a little extra edge really helps out. That's just a natural smell. All of them crawled eggs have natural oils and stuff that come off them. So now it's in that water. Just a little extra to bake that help bring them to this spot. Um, I, I just set up a trail cam on watching this spot. And I hopefully maybe I'll catch Thanks up. for watching. Um, if you like my video, please push that like button. And for more trapping videos, please subscribe. Old Tom answer in a hoot house calling. Nothing like the sound when the day breaks. Me and Daddy in the woods on a Saturday. Kentucky, the place where high